G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. Well, lots of really exciting news today, but I thought I'd start off going over to CoinGecko here and we can just have a look at where things are at in the market at the moment. So the market cap continues to grow. We're now getting up to that $330 billion mark. So again, we were down around the kind of 260, 70 to $280 billion mark for quite a while and it had fluctuate up a little bit and then it'd fluctuate back down and then it'd fluctuate up a little bit and then it would fluctuate back down. But now it's just on a steady climb. And we can see Bitcoin's been up 15% in the last seven days. Uh, dropped a little bit over 24 hours, but again, we're up a little bit. Ethereum just kind of steady in the last 24 hours, not too much happening, uh, but 21% and XRP, 20%. That's for XRP. That's pretty good considering uh, what's been happening uh, for quite some time. It's just been going down and down and down. Maybe at 17 sort of cents, I think is where I got to it, found some support. But anyway, just traveling kind of sideways. Let's go over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look. So again, this is the long-term chart and we can see the channel that uh, we were trying to uh, kind of break out of up the top here. And we were traveling in this lower chart for a while there, but we finally did. And so if we zoom in, we well and truly broke right out of it, pumped out of it, no problems whatsoever. But as I said yesterday, there is a uh, CME gap uh, at around 9,600 to sort of 9,900. So we could see a retracement, but either way, that still brings us kind of outside of this chart, really. Well, maybe just sort of back down to here, but pretty good either way. But I found some really interesting news. So we'll start with this one from the Daily Hoddle. And this is talking about Data Dash. So he has his own YouTube channel. Go and uh, give him a look if you haven't already checked out. And he's uh, really positive about three of the bigger cryptocurrencies at the moment. So number one is Ethereum. So he says, you know, all the metrics and that for Ethereum are just building. Obviously, Bitcoin's leading the way. But Ethereum is really starting to build. Uh, and you can see from the... Uh, charts, uh, particularly the uh, overall market chart, that the uh, Bitcoin dominance had dropped for a while. It's built up a little bit now that Bitcoin's starting to pump, but he's uh, really excited about Ethereum. Now he's also really excited about XRP. So XRP's finally, you know, started to break out from its descending uh, resistance that it's been at for a really long time. And again, hopefully that 17 cents was kind of the bottom. Uh, I got some in at around about, I think, I might have got some at 18. I definitely got some at 20. Uh, I would have been lucky if I got some at 18, but I definitely picked up some at 20 cents. Uh, and now I'm uh, in some nice profit with that. So he's really positive on XRP. Not so much, uh, he thinks there's only going to be modest gains in the kind of sort of short to midterm, but long term, you go down here, this is the kind of pumps that XRP can have. It just has these massive boosts. So again, in the sort of short to midterm, a little bit of price action, but in the long term, at some stage, XRP is most likely going to repeat what it's done before. And it's just going to have some massive spikes. And lastly, he talks about Litecoin. So down here, he's saying this is the entry area for Litecoin. And this is roughly where it's been sitting now. I got some Litecoin a little while ago and I think I got it for oh, 40 something dollars, I think it was. Uh, in the 40s anyway. I can't remember the exact price. Uh, and I finally made some profit on it. I was sitting on it for ages and I was getting really worried. I was like, oh God, am I going to have to you know, dump this uh, and take a loss? But I hadn't lost too much. So it wasn't at the point where I was kind of really panicking, but I was just a little bit worried. But uh, I just held and now I'm in profit. And again, Litecoin, it's an, uh, an oscillator. So when Bitcoin pumps, usually this pumps first. But this time Bitcoin pumped first. But what generally happens with uh, Litecoin is it pumps around about three times harder. So you can get three times bigger gains, but it sort of loses about three times as much when it goes into a bear market as well. So they're the three ones that he's... Uh, uh, excited about at the moment, the bigger plays as opposed to the small and mid cap plays. Now another story that uh, I liked, so the Wink Winklevoss twins, so again if you don't know who they were, they sort of technically invented Facebook uh, and then Mark Zuckerberg took it off them uh, and created it into the behemoth it is at the moment. Now he had to pay these two uh, gentlemen out, he gave them some money and compensation 
uh, you know, most people would say, oh, geez, that would have really hurt, uh, you know, losing Facebook considering how much it's worth these days. But the money that they got from uh, Zuckerberg uh, in the payout for Facebook, they invested into Bitcoin and are quite wealthy now. And so they call them the Gemini twins because they, uh, they invested in Gemini as well. So they're really excited about the Bitcoin and they say it's going to be fundamentally fundamentally different this time and mainly because there's a lot of infrastructure now there was very little infrastructure for bitcoin back in 2017 there weren't that many places that you could buy it you know there was nowhere near as many wallets as they have today uh, so infrastructure um institutional money has also got in so there's a lot of capital behind it now whereas before it was just retail and a very small part of retail as well it wasn't you know the big massive retail that we're all hoping for and once big retail finally get into cryptocurrencies it's going to push them very very high so the capital that's behind it the infrastructure that we have now but also just the projects uh, that are suddenly being built well not suddenly but are now being built they're they're more legit a lot of them don't get me wrong plenty of scam ones out there but there's a lot of fundamental re use real world use for cryptocurrencies but something that was interesting and we're talking about the capital that is behind bitcoin and that at the moment grayscale so big time investors they now have 5.1 billion dollars in digital assets invested that is a lot considering our uh, cap is 380 billion and they got five billion so I, th I think that'd probably make up about maybe two percent uh, of all sort of you know cryptocurrencies not that they're invested all cryptocurrencies but kind of the bigger ones, Litecoin, XRP, uh, Ethereum, and particularly Bitcoin, uh, they have quite a big stake. And if you got, you know, one to two percent of the entire cap, uh, that's a good amount. So these are all really positive things. You know, these guys could see it coming a long time ago. They got into it uh, a number of years ago, bought a whole lot of Bitcoin. They've been through some boom and bust cycles, and now they got the Gemini thing going. So I think they might know a thing or two. Now we can go over here, and this is something that I really love. Everyone's talked about Bitcoin, it's a scam, and you're going to lose money, and this and that. Currently, with the price that Bitcoin's at, and again, it's you know traveling around about sort of $10,900, $11,000, which is nearly everybody, not quite everybody, but nearly everybody who ever bought Bitcoin is in profit. Take that into account for all these people are trying to tell you it's going to go to zero and it's going to go to nothing. It's not going to go to zero and it's not going to nothing. Could it dump drastically? Absolutely it could. That's what these things do. They pump really hard and they dump really hard. But Bitcoin is becoming less and less volatile. Don't get me wrong, still very, very volatile, but it's probably one of the least volatile cryptocurrencies outside of the stable coins. It is getting more and more stable. Again, we still got a long way to go before it's really stable, and that's why the big gains can be made. But 93% of people, really only anyone who ever bought it over sort of $11,000, uh, is at a loss at the moment. And if they just simply hold, I have no doubt that at some stage they're going to be back in profit. And if they just hold for the long term, they're going to be doing just fine. Now, another really good story. So Ethereum's adoption rate after five years, it far exceeds what Bitcoin's ever done. So Vitalik, uh, he used to work on the Bitcoin core team. He was part of uh, all of that. He was a Bitcoin sort of, you know, guru and sort of developer. Uh, and he just saw that there was, uh, well, he came up with an, an idea. Him and a couple of other guys, uh, Charles Hoskins from Cardano and that, and they wanted to build a better Bitcoin. So they built Ethereum. Charles Hoskins obviously moved away, built ADA, Cardano, and Vitalik kept working on Ethereum. And after uh, five years, it far exceeds. Now we go down here, this is a really interesting chart that I saw. So this is the adoption rate uh, that's happening. So Bitcoin was here after 10 days, this is where Ethereum was. And 100 and 1,000 and 1,500 and 1,800 days, you can see that Ethereum is just absolutely flying. It has massive amounts of people building on it at the moment. Yes, the fees are absolutely horrendous at the moment. And I truly hope something, uh, you know, some some of the uh, programs and that that are being built, Loopring and the Raiden network and things like that, 
they quickly get adopted uh, and the Ethereum fees can be brought down because they they are horrible at the moment. Uh, and that is the problem with mainstream adoption at the moment is Bitcoin, even those fees are going up at the moment, getting a bit expensive and Ethereum, uh, yeah, they're really expensive at the moment for Ethereum. I mean, I've seen uh, worse transfer rates from Bitcoin when it really started to pump. But the adoption rate is really, really big. Ethereum is five times, is growing five times faster than Bitcoin ever did. So if that keeps scaling, well, Ethereum will have to be an absolute steal at the moment, picking it up for like, I don't know, $300. You know, Bitcoin's at $10,000 now, 11,000, and Ethereum is growing five times sort of faster. Get on an Ethereum would be my advice, not financial advice, just my personal advice. And I've got myself a good stack of Ethereum and I also plan to keep getting more. Now, finally, Bitcoin hedge fund, uh, Bitcoin, Bit, <laughs> Bitcoin, excuse me, I apologize. Bitcoin's hedge fund sharks are swimming with the whales. So basically what this uh, article goes in to say is that Wall Street traders are now starting to pay a lot of attention to Bitcoin. They generally haven't been really keen on it for a long time just because of how volatile it's been. But obviously now with uh, the way things are going with the dollar and again, a, a lot of traders at the, at the moment, they are really worried about uh, basically the US dollar uh, being pumped to infinity and that's pumping up all the stock prices at the moment. Uh, they're really worried that there's gonna be a massive deflation at the moment. And so they're using Bitcoin as a hedge they're getting involved in Bitcoin and obviously once the big traders, you know, from the traditional markets start to come into here, you know, we'll have to watch out, you know, they'll obviously try and manipulate it and things like that. And, you know, there'll be all sorts of market manipulation happening, but that's just what happens. I think we're still a long way away from, not a long way away, but I'd say probably another halving or maybe even two halvings away from Bitcoin sort of really stabilizing and this just being part of the traditional markets. You know, not everyone uh, in Wall Street is looking at Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. There's still plenty of them that uh, don't like it and, and think it's just a fad and it's not going to last. But more and more are coming across. Mike Novogratz and, you know, uh, uh, people like that, they were part of the big hedge funds and part of the traditional markets. They saw greener pastures, came over to cryptocurrencies and uh, have done quite well. So that's the news for today. I think a lot of it's really, really interesting. Uh, put your thoughts down below in the comments and let me know what you think of how the markets are going. Are you excited by some of the things that we spoke about? Have you got into any Litecoin, XRP, Ethereum? Are you just a Bitcoin maximalist? Or have you gone looking for those massive gains in the sort of mid to really low cap uh, cryptocurrencies? Uh, I don't have any really low cap ones. I've definitely got a couple of mid cap ones. But I've, say, I've, st I've stated this on a number of occasions. Bitcoin's my number one, Ethereum's my number two, XRP's my number three, and between all of those, they make up around about 75 to 80% of uh, my total portfolio. And then I got around about 20% uh, in all sorts of altcoins, uh, with Litecoin being up there as one of my bigger purchases, along with uh, Carva, Synthetix, Kyber Network. But again, a whole stack of other ones that I've put in there. Anyway, uh, please hit like, that's gonna help my video get out. I'm really trying to grow my video and I'll continue to try and do daily uh, vlogs. I haven't missed one for a while, so that's really good, but I do have a job, of, yeah, got a life outside of crypto, got a daughter that I've got to look after and things like that, but I'll keep my best up uh, to keep the daily videos going and to try and improve my content. If you like what I'm doing, hit subscribe as well. Love to have you as a, as a subscriber. Any questions you have, any uh, thing you'd like to know from me, please put it down in the comments and I'll be sure to answer you back. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on the gain train today and I'll see you next time.